For the past three months, I've been working on a small puzzle game for the Mac alongside my main project, Unscripted. The game was a small portion of a bigger project for independent study, where I tried to write AI strategists that solved the game. I initially had a chunky script and plans on making this video, but it's been a long while since I've made a video and posted it to YouTube. I'm hoping that this video will serve as documentation about this game in particular. Future me here, I should probably clarify, I don't mean like actual project documentation, because I clearly already have that, where I have all of the code documented. What I actually mean is more documenting the experience and the actual project itself. Figured I should clarify. Since I was to get an AI to play a puzzle game that I had designed, I decided to give myself a month to design a full puzzle game for macOS. In a way, it was a month-long game jam for me. I decided to use SpriteKit, a framework for making 2D games and animations, and I will be coding the entire project in Swift since I am familiar with the language. I created an Xcode project when classes began and started brainstorming ideas. I looked to Portal and Superliminal for inspiration, and I wanted to make a game that had a similar feel. In each level, you have to turn on a series of levers, computers, and pressure plates to open the exit door and escape. However, I wanted to try a different approach to this concept. I eventually settled on the idea of the player being able to wear different costumes that had a special and unique ability. Within the first couple of weeks, I had a working prototype with player movement and costume switching. By that time, I designed the major visuals for the game using Piskel, since I wanted to go for a pixel art style. Working with SpriteKit and Swift was straightforward. However, I ran into issues with player movement since I decided to use a physics-based approach, meaning that the player moved at a certain speed based off of their weight rather than gliding across levels. I did work around this issue with more physics bodies and calculations to get the movement right. Since I knew I would be working with AI strategists that will need a challenge, I decided to integrate Game Center and create nine achievements for the player to earn throughout the game. Since I was developing on macOS Big Sur Developer Beta, I implemented support for leaderboard scoring on challenge levels. I didn't have time to make music, and I was rusty with music composition, so I used music written by Kai Engel to capture the initial feeling of the game and provide the atmosphere I wanted. By the end of the month, I had a full working game, publishing the first release to the Mac App Store. With a working game ready, I began working on setting up an environment for AI strategists to be able to play. The logic remains the same, but I disabled user input and ran a routine that would let the strategist make a series of moves based on if the strategist was in a winning state or not, given a particular strategy. To do this, I used Gameplay Kit, a framework that contains tools for game logic such as pathfinding and decision trees. Within a week or two, the game was ready for AI strategists to play, and I started researching the two kinds of strategies Apple provides in Gameplay Kit. However, I soon discovered that Apple strategists work for turn-based competitive games and would not survive with the game I made. I decided to scrap that idea and design my own. I first created a random move strategist, which picks moves at random. Although simple to implement, the strategist wouldn't solve puzzles anytime soon unless you let it run for a while. To test adding weights, I made a variant of the random move agent that assigned random weights to the moves it made picking the one with the highest weight. This doesn't change anything major in its strategy, but the weight picking worked. As I worked on implementing the random move strategies, I took a break from AI work and made a couple of extra levels and put them in a purchasable DLC. These levels added complexity, presenting an immediate danger to the player. Abysses. Two of the levels included a special type of input that checked if the player wasn't wearing a costume for it to activate automatically. In total, I made five levels with the new mechanics. The DLC is available as an in-app purchase for $2.99. Considering this was a first attempt at working with in-app purchases, it almost worked out of the box. In addition, I added particle effects using SpriteKit's particle system to add ambient dust particles and electrical sparks. Furthermore, I added a feature that would change how the camera followed the player using SK constraints instead of forcing the camera to always have the same position as the player. With a fresh and open mind, I came back to the AI strategist and created the next best strategy using a decision tree. Decision trees allow the strategist to ask a series of questions about the world and come up with a resulting action from those questions. I started by handcrafting the tree, and I was able to get the strategist to solve the basic level I designed for AI testing. 
I knew that the decision tree would work better than random movements, but this approach did have flaws. Since I hard-coded the tree, the strategist wasn't making decisions of its own, and this tree would be hard to maintain long-term. There had to be a better way. But, before I went into finding better ways to go about using decision trees, I decided to build an AI simulator directly into the game. The simulator would let me pick settings for a particular simulation in addition to the strategy I wanted to use. With Swift UI, I quickly made a console for me to debug the agents without requiring Xcode to be running. This became helpful in determining what the strategist was seeing. The AI simulator was released in a feature update to the game for free but I had to make it available to Max running Mac OS Catalina. When I returned to the decision tree problem, I found that Gameplay Kit could generate trees for me, provided that I give it example data and results. I tried this approach with a small amount of questions and data, and it worked flawlessly. In response to this discovery, I tried to make a strategist that would record its previous moves and make a tree from what it had done in the past. Unfortunately, the game would lock up and Xcode would return a nasty error. After around the sleuthing, I came to the conclusion that I had too much data and couldn't make a decision tree using Gameplay Kit in a reasonable amount of time. I was ready to admit defeat. However, I quickly discovered that Xcode bundles an app called CreateML, which lets me create machine learning models that can be exported and used in Xcode projects via CoreML. One of the model types allowed using a decision tree algorithm, similar to what Gameplay Kit offered. I was excited. I could create the decision tree outside of the project via CreateML, export that model, and design a strategist that used that pre-baked model. Sadly, the strategist won't be able to learn from its previous moves, but this was a step in the right direction. I quickly wrote up a script in Python to generate a random dataset and tested it with CreateML. Suffice to say, it worked. The strategist was successfully using the ML model to make decisions, no matter how terrible those decisions were. I spent the following week on cleaning up the code, rewriting the settings page with Swift UI since it was more maintainable than storyboards. During this stage, I added support for custom icons and changing what Game Center could publish. I also designed some new music for the game with Logic Pro to better suit the game's atmosphere, and I think I did a good job. Additionally, I created a state recorder that would let me generate the data I needed by playing a level and making decisions. The recorder can export the results to a CSV file that I plug in to create ML. I did that with three levels I added for AI testing purposes, and it somewhat works. You know, it's kind of like moments like these where I just kind of... Uh, <laughs> I really don't know what's going on. Like, did I really have to <laughs> make it separate? Files just for recording? Really? Uh, <laughs> this right kick is um, pretty annoying. <laughs> it may not be the best, and I will need to record more data. However, the semester was coming up to a close, and I needed to wrap this up quickly. I pushed the recorder and settings rewrite update to the Mac App Store. And at the time of recording, it's currently waiting for a review and should be approved and released by the time I present my findings to professors, students, and others. I may try again with the machine learning in a future project, but who knows? If you're interested in playing this game on your Mac, you can search for the Costume Master on the Mac App Store or use the link in the description of this video. I encourage you to check out Unscripted, my main project, with the other link in the description. If you like this content, I may make more videos going over how I develop some of my projects and may make devlogs for any future projects. Let me know if that's something you want to see. I hope you enjoyed learning about how I made this game and tried to get AI strategists to play it.